Okay, so this section is about tools for reasoning about correctness. And what we've seen so far is the notion of a Hort triple, which is true if an annotated code segment is correct, and the notion of a weakest precondition, which tells you for what inputs described by a predicate Q, the command will leave you in a state described by the post condition R. In this unit, we're going to put all of that together and show you how the weakest precondition together with the Hort triple allow you to prove that an annotated code segment is in fact correct. Let's have a look. So let's consider a program or command that will denote by S and a post condition R. Given a precondition Q, how can we then prove that starting with an input that is described by the predicate Q, S will complete in a finite amount of time in a state described by R, in other words, with output that satisfies the predicate R. Given conditions on the input to command S, how can we prove that its execution leaves us in a desirable state? Let's revisit homework 2.2.1.1 and let's have a look. So there, the first question was whether assigning x plus 1 to y when started in a state where x was equal to 10 leaves you in a state where y is greater than 5. And there you were asked to do so by examination. So, the question is, does this Hoare triple hold? Now what we have learned is that there is a notion of a weakest precondition. Since x equals 10 is a precondition, if something else is the weakest precondition, then x equals 10 better imply that, or else you won't be able to execute y equal to x plus 1, leaving you in a state where y is greater than 5. That's the whole idea behind a weakest precondition. So the question you then have to ask, is it the case that x equals 10 implies the weakest precondition y becomes x plus 1, leaving you in a state where y is greater than 5? Well, we've asked you to intuitively define the weakest precondition of various things. So with that, we then concluded that the weakest precondition in this case was x is greater than 4. Only if x is greater than 4 will computing y becomes x plus 1 leave you in a state where y is greater than 5. So all we have to do now is verify that implication. Now, here you could, of course, look at that and say, well, da, and just move on. Or you can formally prove it. Through some algebra, you can take x greater than 4 and separate it into three different regions. The case where x is between 4 and 10, not including 4 and 10. The case where x is equal to 10. And the case where x is greater than 10. And when you do that, you can then shuffle things around a little bit using commutativity and associativity. And you get this expression right here, where now we have isolated x equals 10 on the right-hand side all the way on the left. And then comes in this very powerful tool called the weakening strengthening laws, through which you know that this is actually true. So we have now proven that this word triple is correct. Well, almost. We're still counting on an intuitive feel for the weakest precondition for this particular uh, command. And therefore, we're really not quite there yet, but we're getting awfully close. So, let's look at this as an alternative view. Here we have the annotated program. What we know is that the weakest precondition must be true before you execute y becomes x plus 1 if we are to leave ourselves in a state where y is greater than 5. So we can insert that just before the command because we know at that point in the program that must be true. What we then notice is that x is equal to 10 must also mean that the weakest precondition is true because there are no further commands between that assertion and the assertion about the weakest precondition. We know what the weakest precondition is. Well, we intuitively stated that it was x is greater than 4. And then we're back to checking whether x is equal to 10 implies x is greater than 4. 
And again, you can either say, well, da, or you can actually go and formally prove this, much like we did before. So, in general, here is a code segment. You know that you are in a state where Q is true. You know that you want to execute S. You want to be in a state where R is true. You wonder whether this particular annotated program segment is actually correct. You then say, oh, but I know that the weakest precondition S comma R must be true just before S is executed if we are to end up in a state where R is true. We then conclude that Q must imply the weakest precondition. And then it's a matter of verifying that to prove this code segment correct. If the answer is yes, then the code segment is correct. If the answer is no, then the code segment is not correct. So in summary, an annotated program will typically consist of a precondition Q, a command S, and a postcondition R. If we have a way of actually systematically coming up with the weakest precondition for executing S to leave us in a state where R is true, then we now have a means for proving that a HORP triple holds, that this code segment is correct. All you do is check whether the precondition Q implies the weakest precondition of S leaving you in a state where R is true, and you're done. And then we can conclude that the annotated code segment is actually correct. So far, you've only informally determined the weakest precondition. So all we need to do is define the weakest precondition function for various commands in our pseudocode, and then we actually have the means for formally proving code segments correct. And that's what we're going to spend the remainder of this particular week on.